Um, all right, one more piece of sounds because look, Donald Trump, and I said this before, I think for the vast majority of Donald Trump's presidency, the rhetoric of calling him authoritarian, calling him a fascist, I think it's, I, look, it has distracted from where he has deeply abused people, like as an example, kidnapping and uh, terrorizing uh, migrants and asylum seekers and children. Uh, but it has also trivialized what is just a continuity of policy overall under Trump, particularly under Republicans, but also many Democratic policies, the policies of the modern stage of neoliberalism we're in. Trump is the natural outgrowth, not the precondition. And it's also opened the way for a lot of opportunistic, mediocre resistance people. As my friend Aisha Ahmed uh, tweeted out today, she said, it turns out resistance is a lot harder and takes a lot more courage than just calling Trump fat on Twitter. <laughs> and I think that those things are absolutely true. And I also think that even as we absolutely correctly critique that whole language economy and hysteria, we have to keep real and current with events on the ground. And what Trump attempted to do last night and opened the door for, along with the rhetoric of absolute scum psychopaths like Tom Cotton and the goading of Tucker Carlson is an acceleration in the authoritarian direction. And Washington DC itself, because it is not a state, and because it does not have rights, uh, is in a state of a form of martial law. Nonviolent protesters outside of the White House were tear gassed because Donald Trump was embarrassed because he's a fucking punk and went to a bunker and he needed to show he was a man by weirdly holding a Bible. And now we have footage like military choppers, like tanks, and like this, the head of the Joint Chiefs in Washington, D.C., surveying the situation. And freedom of speech, uh, that's perfectly fine. We support that. We took an oath of allegiance to the Constitution of the United States of America to do that, to protect everyone's rights, and that's what we do. We've got the D.C. National Guard out here, and I'm just checking their, seeing how well they're doing. That's all. And freedom of speech. Uh, yep. That's fucking extraordinary. That is extraordinary. It's crazy. Okay, so my question, right, because I, I, I try not to watch any of him on my TV screen. I like, watch the clip. And I realized that he was, they were showing us live, a live view of the protest as Trump was walking, you know, getting ready to walk across the street. So you actually watch them, like, attack the peaceful protesters and, in, in, like, shoot tear gas. Like, we, you watch that at the same time. And I'm like, did they cut that feed on Fox News? I, I was just wondering if anybody, did anybody document that? Did they, did they, did the viewers of Fox News not watch as peaceful protesters get attacked so he could then walk across the street to the church? Uh, I don't know what they did on Fox, but what disturbs me is I think there's a big element of the Fox audience that would love to see protesters get tear gassed for not violently protesting. Oh, I'm sorry, guys, I, I should have set this up before. I just don't have this in front of me. What is that general's name? Uh, we should always say his name. Yeah, it's a General Milley. General Milley, right. General Milley. So, no, I don't know what they did, Artesia. And I think, you know, that synchronizing, though, calling for the 7 p.m. curfew with that photo op is, I mean, that's the height. That, that is, that's the fucking, that's the murder politics. That's the Achilla Bimbe. That's it. Mm. And I don't know. I think that there, I think at the same time, I think we need to be open and I think we need to have a big mind because I also think that a lot of Americans are really all over the place. They want normalcy. Mm. They want order. They do not hate the police. They do not hate the military. They actually hold those institutions in a lot of esteem. And then on the other hand, I actually think they really are appalled by these murders. I think they actually have an understanding of why people are protesting. And I think they certainly increasingly deplore Trump and they might even have some openness to the broader systemic issues we need to get into. I think you need to meet most people where they're at, which is in a place of extraordinary paradox. No, I mean, to be honest, I, I, I really do agree with you. I said a long time ago, guys, we cannot go get the, the maggots, right? We cannot go get these ardent Trump supporters and keep arguing with them. Like we have to go get the people who are ready 
to jump ship or who already jump ship and really work within um, their understanding of what's happening to try to get rid of this fuck ass. Um, I am not about to appeal to people's parents and families and friends who, um, who would cheer for peaceful protesters to be tear gas so he could walk across the street. Like, like I, I, I just can't see where me and those folks would ever agree on anything. So like I'm saying to folks, if you think that shit is fucked up, then come, come sit at my table so we can have a, a conversation about what we do next. The rest of y'all, I'm, I'm just not with it. I'm not yeah, about to I, I love that because I think that's a much, I think that the, the part of the job actually the last couple of years has just actually been to push back against that complacent liberal impulse. Everybody, you know, no, you said this, you did that actually to be really like, you know what? Yes. If you voted for Trump because he thought he, he you know, he, uh, he was going to offer you X and Y and Z about the economy. If you, are checked out, if you voted for Trump because of whatever, if you thought this, if you thought that, we have to look at what that 10% opening is. And at the same time, you know, that is a, you know what, that, that actual, that overt cruelty really is like a very basic dividing line. I think that actually is the clearest test our teacher. If mm -hmm. you look at that on television, and there might be people of all sorts of bad politics and all sorts of this and all sorts of that, but they see that and they go, that's fucked up. What's that right. about? And, yeah. they, and if that's true, there's room to work from. If they see that and they go, oh, I should have done that a long time ago. That is a person where, you know, I think ultimately you can't be spiritually fully close to anybody. But in terms of like an immediate, like that, that is in this moment, in this context, that's a political enemy, pure and simple. That doesn't even require all the melodrama. That just is. No. You took information. No. If no. you saw that, you like no. that, that's no. it. My you don't believe in my humanity. You don't believe in my right. So um, I don't think there's anything that we could, we could talk about as a black person. I'm done trying to convince people of my humanity. Um, I'm, I'm just, I'm just not doing it. So. Absolutely. Nene Leak speaks out on that one. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's a clear, that's just so fucking clear. Um, and I know, cause I have the, the uh, you know the impulse to to push and and see like you know where like how people get you know wh where it can be pushed where it can be opened where it can be challenged if you sit and you watch that or you watch those cops that bridge in Philadelphia no <laughs> there's no there's no gray there's no opening there's no place for that shit anyway shape and form full stop period. And that's yeah. the duality too. You need that openness, but you need the clarity. You need the wisdom. You need the compassion. Right. Now, I'm, especially where for me, we watch for a couple of weeks, people show up on state capitals with rifles, yeah. big ass guns. I mean, I, I, just, I wouldn't even know where you get guns that big. And they showed up on their state capitals and they, they, they push cops, they block ambulances. You know, they blocked in streets where medical um, vehicles could not get through. They screamed at doctors and nurses who were trying to tell them to wear masks. And they made it home. They made it home in one piece. So I, you know, I, I we should have the same respect. Um, if it is a, you know, us versus them thing, like then I think these, these people protesters should have the same respect. We know police are out policing ideology. Um, you know, Artesia, couple of minutes before we wrap up. Mm -hmm. Can you take us back? You, you, you began with us with some great advice. First of all, want you back on again in another couple of weeks if you can. Can you be one of our, oh. one of our, I mean, you were, you were crew in real, but now you've got to be one of our post-game regulars. Can you do that? Oh, um, I, would, I would love to, to join, um, especially as the conversations develop further um, and there's more details to share with people. Um, you know, as someone who's in the, on the media and entertainment side of things, I feel like it is my job to amplify the message and make sure um, those things are always being communicated 
appropriately out there, whatever. So thank you for giving me your platform. I don't I don't know what I'm gonna come back and and share with folks, but just know that um, there's work that's that's being done and things are being discussed and you know people are strategizing and in any way that I can help get that strategy out to a wider audience. Uh, I I will be here. I will do that. And you know, I just want to you know rap with my homies when I can. I was gonna say share my platform. This is me, Casa <laughs> Sucasa, Artesia. Damn. Of course, I know. Like I just like, want to come. Welcome to home. share my platform. Let's stop. <laughs> I will never use the word platform again. Okay. All right. I, I'll ban platform from my vocabulary as well. Yes. Told you, I just been on the phone. Platform. Platform. This is what we've been talking about today, you know, how, how to use our platforms, especially um, in, the, in the wake of um, a real messy rollout of Blackout Tuesday. It's like, okay, well, I think we got to learn how to use these platforms a little better because it looks like we had a, a really bad algorithm problem and a communication problem today. I'm just so thankful that you're front and center of those because we need you. Um, Artesia, I love you. Hopefully we can talk again in a couple of weeks. Uh, thank you so much for doing this, taking time to join us. You just watched a Michael Brooks show video. Subscribe to get them all. Why wouldn't you? Don't be foolish. Click subscribe below and become a patron as well. Patreon.com slash TMBS. Thanks, everybody.